City for an update on his campaign, as well as the petition process, which, if I'm not mistaken, uh, starts today. Joe, how are you? Yes, it does, Liz. I'm fine. Thank you for having me. So yes, what it started. It started today. You might say that we started distributing our petitions last night. I was even in Brooklyn, believe it or not, meeting with 40 of my supporters out in Bensonhurst. So uh, we're well prepared to do this, and there'll be no issue about getting the petitions that we need. Now, we should, let's just back up before we go into the petition process. Um, you actually, we should say, are the conservative designee. So you do have the assurance of being on at least one line in the general election in November. Yes, I'm delighted that I, I won that convention vote uh, by a very sound margin of 69 percent, which shows that my message resonated not only with the people on Main Street, as we saw in the recent public polling, but with the uh, conservative delegates, and I thought that was really nice. One thing that uh, State Conservative Party Chairman Mike Long suggested to me before his convention was that actually the Republicans and the conservatives owed it to you to give you a shot this time, because some people might not recall, but in 2000 you actually ran against Hillary Clinton. Yes, I did. I, Mike uh, needed someone to um, take on Rudy Giuliani at that time. That's be before 9-11, uh, because he had uh, told Mike that he was going to get both the liberal and the conservative lines. He had had the liberal line from his friend Ray Harding, and Mike thought that that was not a good thing, and he figured that I would be a good candidate at that time, and I ended up being a, a very good, feisty candidate uh, for about uh, six weeks, even went on major uh, TV shows like Marsha Kramer, and it was uh, obvious that uh, he was not ready to battle me to take the conservative line, and he dropped out. Well, well, actually, I'm not so sure that that's why he dropped out. I think he had a, he had a divorce issue, and he had a health issue, too, if, if I'm not mistaken. But ironically, you dropped out, uh, you bowed out to make room for uh, a guy named Rick yes. Lazio, who's now... Yes, I... Well, you know, it, it, that was a simple choice to make because at that point uh, we had a tough race in front of us against uh, uh, the Hillary, Hillary Rodden Clinton, and we figured that why should I be the spoiler? In fact, in my own mind I was saying if we don't unite these lines, uh, I could be viewed as the spoiler, and obviously there was a big opposition against her. And since my own party at that point felt that Rick Lazio was better prepared for the Republican line, he had a lot of money in the bank, uh, I kind of decided on my own without asking for anything that this was the right thing to do. And I think that kind of resonated with both the Republicans and the conservatives. I was asked to come to the Republican convention to kind of pass the baton to Rick and uh, thinking that we would have a good shot to beat Hillary Clinton, which we didn't in that year. But here I am back 10 years later, and I think this is my, my real shot. Well, actually, though, if, if you were worried about being a spoiler in 2000, why are you not worried about it now? I mean, you did not get on the uh, GOP ballot at the convention. If two other people got on, you're trying to petition your way into a, a three-way primary, which it could be right. really quite freewheeling, actually. And you're st starting to see the gloves come off already between the two candidates who are, who are already on the ballot. Why not just bow out and, and, and let the Republicans put somebody on the conservative line who from that primary actually wins? Well, why should the person with the best message and the best resonance on Main Street, just look at the public polling, the last Marist poll. I scored 31 percent, Mr. Malpass 12, and Mr. Blakeman 13. Uh, it would seem to me that I've got a message that you, you can unite the opposition. And what's that message, Liz? Let me repeat it. You've heard it many times. We're spending money we don't have. We're borrowing from countries that don't share our values, like China. And we're putting the American dream in jeopardy. My message is basically to increase job growth, not the debt growth. We're doing the exact opposite. We're increasing the debt and we're losing jobs. Well, that uh, I think people see me as the answer to uniting the opposition and there's no reason why we shouldn't give choices to people in a primary. We okay. already have a primary, but Joe, as you know. Joe, that message is actually a similar message that David Malpass is intoning. He's been talking about debt. He's been talking about too much spending. He's been talking about too much Washington growth. I'm not arguing that he should or should not be the candidate. I'm just saying that you guys are remarkably similar. But don't you think also perhaps, just perhaps, your name recognition comes from the fact that you have a, a rather famous daughter? <laughs> you know, I don't think so. I think I'm sorry. I have not used her. I, I, I have not used her as a crutch, and she's been very good. 
uh, when she's been on Fox News to say how much she loves her father and how much I helped her accomplish her dreams and how she now wants me to accomplish my dreams and in effect keep the American dream alive. Don't forget, my father was an immigrant, 15 years old, coming through Ellis Island in 1929. I was raised in the Bronx at his food market with my mom, and I kind of worked my way through college as Joey the Waiter, uh, went to a major accounting firm as an intern, became a partner 10 years later, and I worked hard, my daughter saw that, and I kind of passed the American dream on to her. Do we want to do this to the next generation? That's really why I'm in this race. I should actually mention, per perhaps, if, if there's anybody out there who's not aware that your, that your daughter is uh, Cara Diaguardi, who's a judge on American Idol, which is sort of fitting for the American dream, American Idol, it all fits right. rather neatly together. She, um, and she, she worked very hard to get that. She worked very hard to be there, and I think that's the American way. We've got to keep this going as the greatest opportunity society ever created. Okay, so you are planning to see this all the way through to the end, to the general election. Absolutely. You're, you're going to stay on uh, the conservative line. So what's your plan here? I mean, a, a petition drive which starts today, as we mentioned earlier, that's an expensive and rather time-consuming effort. You've got to get somewhere at least 15,000 signatures. That is a lot right. of signatures. Who's working for you? Well, you know, that's not so onerous when you consider a state this big. And I have many people who relate to me because of my activism in the past 20 years in Westchester County. Just recently I started something called Rethinking Westchester County Government because my county has the highest taxes of 3,000 counties in America. So we have many qualified volunteers that are going to help us do this, not only in Westchester County, but in the Bronx, in Queens, in Brooklyn, as I said, I was there yesterday, uh, in Ulster County, and up in uh, Schenectady County. And we believe that we'll have no problem getting the necessary petitions to get on the primary ballot. Okay, but what about, will you be forging any further north or west? I mean, what about Buffalo? What about the North Country? What oh, about? Yeah. No, no, we, we just started the process. Obviously, there'll be a network. There is five weeks, you know, to do this. This is the first day. So, and I'm going to be co-managing that process uh, with my staff because, hey, you know, my whole life has been accomplishment, one of accomplishment in the private sector, having spent 22 years in a large accounting firm where I had 20 managers working for me as a partner, and I think I know how to do this. Uh, and, and I know how to motivate people and make sure they were organized so that we get valid signatures and we don't have a situation where technically we could be knocked off. That's not going to happen to Jody Aguardi. I assure you I will be in that primary and once I'm in that primary on the conservative line uh, neither one of the other two can beat me. So you'll see me uh, as the one carrying the flag on both the Republican line and conservative line to unite the opposition against uh, Kirsten Gillibrand in November. Okay, let's actually just talk briefly about, you've already seen, I'm sure, some of the attacks that have been flying between these other two competitors. There have been some allegations by Bruce Blakeman that he, he says he represents the pizza and beer wing of the Republican Party and suggests that the other wing is, you know, too much caviar and champagne. Uh, what is your response to that? I mean, you've put a, about a million dollars of your own money. David Malpass has done similarly. Uh, Bruce right. Blakeman put up a, a couple, a uh, hundred thousand and change into his campaign, right. but he's did not got the money that you've got. I know, but you, you know, you have to understand, I, I'm a conservative in action. You don't think I spent that money already. Uh, I'll bet you that when you see the reports, Mr. Malpass spent a lot of money having these political operatives uh, dealing for him. No, I uh, husbanded my resources in a very uh, good way so that you will be seeing a, a very good report on how Jody Aguari does not spend money he doesn't have to spend. And I'm in a fundraising mode right now, a very active one. In terms of how they're attacking each other, hey, let them do it. Uh, I know who I am, the people know who I am, and that's why I resonated in all of the public polling. And don't forget, Liz, I'm only in this race since March 16th. Uh, Mr. Blakeman's been in it, I think, for three months before me, and Mr. Malpass, while he announced after me, was engaged in the race uh, well before me because I've seen him giving speeches. Well, we will be looking for that fundraising report. It's due out in the middle of July, not too long from now, and we'll be looking for more of you, right. too. Thanks very much, Joe Diaguardi, for joining me this evening. Thank you, Liz.